Hello, my name is Yoni Tamir, and today I'll be presenting on behalf of Something Snaky. Our group consists of Monica Russo, Morgan Richards, Mache Simpson, and myself. This presentation will introduce you to the premise of our show, Superior Serpent Services, our characters, and then delve into our de application of management concepts on an episode level. Following this, we're going to talk to you about our newly sculpted view of management, reflect on the project as a whole, and provide recommendations for future students going forward. Our TV show revolves around Superior Serpent Services, a firm made up of five snakes who portray various aspects within the company. At first glance, this is a pretty far out idea. You may wonder, how did we even come up with such a thing? I was in a brainstorming session with a colleague when I brought up my need to come up with a TV series plot. After establishing some basic parameters, within a minute she spits out the high level idea. It was amazing. I took it and ran. We came up with names, roles, and the firm itself. The fact that the show is all about a group of snakes and not humans makes it much easier to be satirical in how we present the show. So, what is the show about, and why is this related to management? Superior Serpent Services is a delicacy acquisition firm. They acquire various forms of eggs and sell them. To the snakes, these eggs are delicacies and are quite hard to resist. The premise itself poses integrity dilemmas within the organization, and this is compounded onto the many segregation of duties conflicts which are inherent in this five snake structure. The cast of Superior Serpent Services were created out of a bunch of fluffy pipe cleaners. We have Celia, who's the head manager, Sly, our acquisitions expert, Steve from HR, Sally from sales, and Sven, who does a lot of security stuff. We feel that the cast is representative of what you're going to find in the workplace. Whether it's the office setting of a corporation or a retail environment, you're working with people. People are people. They have their own views and personalities. They aren't the same every day, and we feel this cast is dynamic and representative of the workplace. Each character is uniquely identified by their popping eyes. You won't miss them. The episodes are short and sweet. They consist of dynamic shots of each character, and then are edited in sequences to correspond with our script. We have had a good bit of fun making the voiceovers, too. The goal here is to take the big concepts of that week's chapter, and then bring them to life using the TV show. Episode 1 started out by introducing our cast, but the premise of the episode itself is based on making our decisions. Decisions happen every day. Whether it's something small, or it requires the scale of going to management because it can affect day-to-day uh, -day processes. In the scenario in this episode, we introduced uh, the situation of Celia presenting a uh, decision topic, and then she took the advice of, of everyone on her team. She looped them into the decision-making process. She incorporated everyone's feedback in making that decision, and that was something that we wanted to uh, exemplify in the episode and to um, show that the team works together going forward. In episode 2, we wrote the story as a flashback to preclude the current state of Superior Serpent Services. We kept Module 6 in mind during design and went with a script based on the entire cast interacting about how the roles in the firm will be satisfied. We ended the episode with a line saying, Who's doing what? Leading us back to the present. For the purpose of this presentation, we're not including the rest of the episodes in the series like in a breakdown like we did for 1 and 2. However, they can all be found in our booklet, which includes the link to our playlist, which has all seven episodes in it. And they're covering really cool topics. They're, they're talking about adopting change in the organization, getting new systems and software and, and people's frustrations with that, a very real-life thing. Uh, we have giving feedback. And, uh, you know, that, that stark line between constructive criticism and not actually appreciating your employee, um, being there to support the team, planning, and then lastly, we, we hit a topic of uh, inclusiveness, which is relatively topical to right now. Um, these following episodes, episodes three through seven, they really kind of followed a similar path. They had, um, they had a, a, an overarching story that flowed from episodes three all the way to seven. Um, the system that was implemented in 3 was still being talked about in the final episode. There's an inherent perception regarding management. Managers are often seen as the boss and generally carry a negative connotation. 
Throughout this course, I've been on an internship and have had the opportunity to see my view of management change. Through Professor Diasio's modules, we see a wide array of roles the manager plays, whether it is how they interact with their employees or handle a situation in a stressful environment. Firsthand, I developed new conclusions of management, seeing attributes come to life in the office. A strong manager shows appreciation, provides good feedback, leads through strenuous times, and considers their team when making the tough calls. Through our work on this project, we created a few steps to succeed for future students. Initiate with one another. Speak up. Respect each other. Have integrity in your work. Seek other members' opinions, and even if they don't want to give them out right, ask them. Lastly, be available and let the group know when you're not going to be there. If you guys can't meet in person, we found some fantastic ways to be able to work remotely. There's technological resources all over the place. These include Skype, Google Hangouts, USF offers Office 365 Collaborate, which lets you all work in the same Office document, so you don't even need to use Google Docs if you don't want. Then we also found WeVideo, which is a fantastic software for video editing through the cloud, and you can actually all work in the same uh, editing suite together. Another amazing resource to us, you can't even value this resource, is WhatsApp. There's other group chat messaging platforms out there, but we chose WhatsApp, and WhatsApp is free, and it lets you collaborate in a sense that not just standard messages, but you could send video messages, you could send pictures, you can send uh, voice memos. Voice memos were huge. It's how we actually were able to record uh, the voice, like the lines for our scripts for our finger puppet episodes, and we just sent them right, right through WhatsApp. You can bring them right onto your computer because you can log in through their website, and boom, download everything, put it right into the editing suite. Communication is the most significant factor, though, among all of this. Um, you got to communicate your team's goals and concerns. Try to communicate within the group. Uh, record due dates at least once a week. Uh, after the initial chat, meetings with members, uh, seek follow-up communication at least every two days to ensure that everybody's on the same page because people just forget about things. Speak up if you feel any inclination of like mistreatment. All communication should be heard and considered by every member. Plan to achieve a fantastic group project together. Any issue or concern should be voiced in the group first before you go to the instructor. When you think about a group project, you get this sour taste in your mouth and this disdain, the fact that, one, you're not even getting to pick your groups, and two, oh my goodness, I have to work in a group project. When we heard about this class, the whole class was a group project. I'm sure that there are many of you who had that feeling. When my group looked back on it, we were in utter shock because this group project wasn't like other group projects that we've had to endure through our education careers. As a team, everyone communicated clearly and thoroughly for every assignment that we went through. The experience working as a group has been positive, professional, and successful. Collaboration takes place at every step of the way. Every group member has completed their portion of the assignments with no issues, and they're always there offering their assistance for stuff beyond what they were assigned in the first place. While all members have not been working on the project at the same time, they keep an open line of communication to assist one another when needed. With a successful continuation of this collaboration, that open line of communication and support from one another, our experience, our experience has remained stress-free and totally enjoyable. Uh, the use of WhatsApp, as mentioned in the last slide, was absolutely critical to this communication, and we were able to collaborate on even the design challenges. On behalf of Something Snaky, I would like to thank you for making it through the entirety of this presentation. We hope you found some takeaways, especially recommendations on approaching group projects in the future.